the contemporary, extant, generations of Hotchkiss are proud to be Americans, with well over a hundred years of settlement in this country. They also celebrate their Scottish heritage, as their ancestors settled in Scotland for well over 200 years, taking on many of the traditions and characteristics of that region. Prior to, and for much longer than that, however, they were English, mainly located within the boundaries of Shropshire. How they came to be in that place is very interesting and unusual, and requires an explanation of the surname itself and how it came to be, pushing the origins of the family even farther backwards into a rather unexpected area. Normandy, France One of the greatest battles in world history occurred on October 14, 1066, when William, Duke of Normandy, an area in northern France abutting the English Channel, attacked the coast of England at Hastings, just 53 miles southeast of London. William had for some years been in the running to be the next King of England, while his first cousin once removed, Edward the Confessor, reigned there. But when Edward passed the crown to his English Earl, Harold Godwinson, William decided upon drastic action to take matters into his own hands. About 2,000 Normans died that fateful autumn day, but almost double that number of Englishmen perished, most importantly King Harold, whose death just before dusk from an arrow shot into his eye ended his reign. By Christmas Day, the new king, now known as William the Conqueror, was crowned. William had tremendous assistance in waging the war that led to his victory, and he honored those people with the spoils of war, namely huge pieces of English land. The names of these loyal supporters are engraved on the renowned Battle Abbey Roll. A scrolled tablet that hung in the abbey erected by William the Conqueror near the site of the battle and which still stands after almost a thousand years, although now in ruins. All of this historical information is necessary as background to a claim that the name Hotchkiss was brought to England following the Norman conquest and coming from the Norman personal name Roger. This connection to Roger may seem an abrupt interruption at this moment, but it will be explained shortly. Bottom line is, the surname Hotchkiss was first found in Shropshire, where Hotchkisses held a family seat from very early times when they were granted lands by William for their distinguished assistance at the Battle of Hastings, and other historical information can substantiate a relationship among William I, an important Norman Roger, Shropshire, and the Hotchkisses. In France, the pronunciation of the R often sounds more like HR, or even just H. Roger must have sounded more like Hodge, Hodge for short. Adding a diminutive to the basic name indicates a little Hodge or a son of Hodge. For example, Hodgkins. Irregular spelling naturally a part of a generally illiterate society, resulted in the name being written many different ways at the few times it was entered into important documents, such as marriage, birth, and death registers by authorities of the church. In our genealogical searches, we see Hodgkins, Hodgecase, Hodgekiss, Hoskies, Hotkeys, Hotchkeys, and many other spellings. 
But who was this first Roger, who was granted lands by William for distinguished assistance at the Battle of Hastings and founded the family at Shropshire? We can only speculate, but some tantalizing hints arise from well-documented circumstances. The Battle Abbey Roll, now preserved on a bronze plaque in Falais, France, lists 315 names of commanders who led the 5,000 Norman troops at Hastings. Among that record are 11 Rogers. Most of them can be searched with the resulting information of what they did and how they were rewarded for their service. Their gifts of land were widespread across the entire country, but one Roger de Montgomery, whose great aunt was a great grandmother of William, extended tremendous backing to the Norman cause by providing 60 ships as well as personally leading the left flank during the successful day at Hastings. Furthermore, historians agree he was most likely the mastermind behind the stunning logistical achievement of the Norman attack on the British coast. For all of this, William created the title of Earl of Shrewsbury, bestowed it on Roger Montgomery, and endowed him with seven-eighths of all of what is now Shropshire. That the Hotchkiss line descended directly from Roger Montgomery is purely speculation, but the allusions to Roger, the Battle of Hastings, and the ensuing family seat, and later firmly documented evidence of the Hotchkiss family's long establishment in that part of England, concoct a series of events that allow us to make sense of how a 24% Western European bloodline, might we say Normandy for a matter of centuries, with a 50% Ireland, Scotland, Wales attribute, coming from much more recent sojourns in Scotland for 200 years, and 14% Great Britain characteristics, about 700 years of the early past millennium, mark the DNA of a mid-20th century Hotchkiss descendant. The first Shrewsbury earldom lasted just 36 years, but it was probably long enough to establish a lasting family connection to Shropshire. Hotchkisses, in all their variations of nomenclature, are present during the ensuing centuries, but it is not until the birth of William Hotchkiss, sometime around the year 1600 AD, that a direct descendancy commences. His name was recorded by the church in the Latinized form, Julielmi. William is the 10th great-grandfather of the baby boomer generation, the 11 times great-grandfather of the Generation Xers, and the 12 times great-grandfather of Millennials. William's son Thomas lived from 1625 to 1671 in Shropshire. An inscription on the back of the last leaf of a register book according to a late act of parliament entitled for burying in woolen in the holdings of the Oswestry parish of Shropshire reads, Thomas Hotchkiss, bookseller, stationer, and medicinal shop in Bailey Street. Since a national decree in 1666 declared that dead bodies must be wrapped in wool before burial, another use for this important English product, and since the rule was repealed in 1680, the synchronization of the law's authority with the late adult years of our Thomas Hotchkiss makes it appear the reference is to this great times nine or ten or eleven grandfather. Thomas and his wife Mary Grayette were parents of John Hotchkiss, 1661 to 1711, who was father of another John, 1689 to 1763. 
Next came John and Elizabeth Manton's son Edward, 1713 to 1752. Then Edward and Anne Hatton Hotchkiss's son Cornelius, who was born in 1739. Cornelius and all five verifiable generations before him had lived in Shropshire, mostly around Maidley. A huge, unalterable change came about probably the year after his father's death in 1752 when Cornelius moved to Erith, Scotland. There he married a Scottish girl, Janet Stewart, and they too had a son Cornelius, 1765-1828. Cornelius II married Agnes Conachy, and they had a family of nine children, at least four of whom lived to adulthood, which was a large proportion compared to previous eras. One son was William, 1799-1861, who married Mary Philip. Their son, Richard Philip Hotchkiss was born in 1841. All available censuses for the Hotchkiss families in Scotland from 1841 through 1881 indicate that the men were employed in coal or ironstone mining. Actually, starting out as colliers, rising to overs men during their primes, and then later being employed as night watchmen in their older ages. Richard married Agnes Hunter when he was 23. Over the next 10 years, they had six children. Agnes died shortly after the birth of that last child, leaving Richard with a 10, 8, 6, four and two-year-old as well as the newborn baby. Richard quite expeditiously married another woman to be his children's stepmother who quite coincidentally happened to be another Agnes Fleming who quite precipitously began to bear him children of her own seven more to be exact. In June of 1881, oldest child of Richard and the first Agnes's family, William Anthony Hotchkiss, did a remarkable thing. He sailed to and settled in America. His ship, the Devonia, departed Glasgow and anchored in New York Harbor. William had given his age as 19 rather than the actual 16, but he was already listed as a Scottish miner and that experience led him to the coal fields of Wyoming where he worked for many years in the mines at Diamondville, Hudson, and Lander. Richard and Agnes Fleming Hotchkiss and their large brood followed William to the United States in 1886. Richard was a tippleman in the coal mine at Deeds at age 68 in 1910. He died in 1914 and is buried in Sheridan. The blended family, whose mothers were the two Agneses, lost track of each other for many years, but the advent of social media allowed members to reconnect, and a small reunion in Story, Wyoming in 2016 proved they all still have much in common, including a great deal of loyalty and love for their immediate and past families. William married Anna Boyle, whose parents had come from Ireland. William and Anna's eight children included Edmund John, who also worked in the mines as he and his wife, Mary Preco, the daughter of Italian immigrants, raised their four children. Their oldest son was John Bryce, or Jack. Jack served his country as a Marine in World War II, returning to America and marrying Eileen Cunningham in Montana in 1948. They had 12 children, 
Of their 43 grandchildren, 22 were born with the last name of Hotchkiss, and of the 57 great-grandchildren, well, that number just keeps growing. Jack and Eileen lived in various states before moving to Idaho in 1972. Jack is buried in the Fargo Cemetery near Wilder. Their extended family now live far and wide, but they regrouped in February 2018 for Eileen's 90th birthday. Lots of Hotchkiss modern history is included in a YouTube presentation of Eileen's life that can be accessed at that site by typing in Eileen Hotchkiss 90. The motto associated with the Earl of Shrewsbury is in French, of course, press de complir, strive to accomplish. This motto easily characterizes the Hotchkiss family as they look forward to much more important work to be done and many more adventures to be enjoyed.